Okay, can, can you hear me? Yeah. So I'm presenting X results uh, from, on behalf of Atlas and CMS. And uh, so briefly, I, I, I will describe the data sample collected by Atlas and CMS, then uh, how standard model X boson production works uh, at LHC, and I will discuss the diboson channels uh, that allow to, for example, to measure the mass and the width and CP and spin. Then uh, I will talk a bit about uh, difermion channels, the decays, and then about cross-section, uh, branching ratios, cob couplings, and a bit of prospects. So, okay. The, basically, all these measurements are based on the RAN1 uh, data set that has been collected in 2010-2012. And uh, the, the, the total luminosity is uh, basically six uh, inverse fentoburn collected in 2011. Uh, and uh, 23 collected in, uh, with uh, ATV center of mass energy. The, the six were with seven uh, TV. And uh, th this is the delivered luminosity. The collected by single experiments are, is a bit lower, of course, due to uh, ex experiment efficiencies. So before going to the X, these are other measurements of uh, standard model cross-sections than uh, at LHC. You, you can see that we go from uh, total cross-section to jets. Here we have W and Zs with and without jets. Then you, you have uh, here TT bar, for example, and, and here you have X. So these are all, uh, and here are basically di bosons. So these are all uh, measurements that have been done for, in this case, by Atlas. You have something similar from uh, CMS, and, and compared to theoretical predictions. And this show uh, over a very wide range of processes and cross section how, how more or less well we, we understand the, the standard model. So we have a very nice picture of all the processes that are happening. So this is good to understand backgrounds and so on. Okay, so going to the X boson production. X boson production uh, uh, occurs basically through these, uh, through different processes. The, the highest cross section is from the gloom gloom fusion, that is this one. Then you, you have uh, what is called vector boson fusion, in, in which you, that is uh, this one. This is characterized by having two, uh, two jets with a rapidity gap in addition to the Higgs in the detector. Then you have associated production of Higgs and W that has lower cross-section, is shown here. Uh, or it can be W or Z, of course. And, and, uh, and finally, the uh, TTH production that has low cross-section. So typically, uncertainty on the theoretical predictions uh, are, for, are a bit higher for the gluon-gluon fusion processes, and basically coming from the QCD scale variations and from the PDFs. And smaller, at least from what regards the QCD scale for the vector boson fusion processes. Also, this 8% uh, for gluon-gluon fusion probably is going down with newer calculation. Okay, Th then on top of production there are decays. So the, uh, this mass of 125 GV is, is very interesting because uh, there are more or less all the possible de decays uh, with a significant branching ratio. So the, 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 most, the, the highest branching ratio is in BB bar that is a very difficult channel to detect. And following that we have WW and ZZ and if you go a bit, uh, you, look, you look here, you have Tau Tau. And uh, if you go farther down, you have Gamma Gamma. That is an important one. And uh, the width of the expected for the X boson at uh, this mass is very small. It's about 4, four MeV. So below any experimental uh, resolution. So the first uh, channel I would like to present is the uh, X into 4 leptons. Basically, this is the channel with a, with a very good signal over background ratio. So the main background is a standard model for lepton production. 
and it's a simple analysis. Basically, you, you calculate the invariant mass of uh, two lepton pairs. And uh, of course, uh, what is important is experimentally is to have a good uh, lepton identification and also good momentum resolution to resolve uh, the peak. And this is the, the measured uh, uh, for lepton mass spectrum from Atlas in this case. Here you see essentially the, this, uh, there, are, there is this peak here that is basically from Z decaying into four leptons. Then at high mass you have the opening of the phase space for the 2Z production on, on shell that is basically dominant in this region. And here you have this peak that is the, the production of the of the X uh, uh, that goes in for leptons. And this is basically a very nice signal over a small background. And uh, using this, uh, uh, here I show the exclusion uh, range uh, produced by C CMS. Basically, uh, an X uh, in, in the range uh, 114 to 832 is excluded, except uh, in this small region around 125. And you can try to evaluate uh, the, the signal strength uh, to compare if the number of X that you serve is compatible with the standard model. So the important point is that uh, there is, a, okay, th this depends on the mass at which you look. So you, you, are, you, you can make a, a plain uh, sig signal strength versus mass. And uh, so depending on the mass that you choose, you, are, you have a, a different signal strength. This is to be keep in mind for the next, uh, uh, for, for all the, the cases where I show a signal strength. In this case for Atlas, they, what is observed is 100.44. That means that uh, cross-section observed over standard model cross-section is uh, 100.44 with this error, so it's well compatible with one. And the same for, for CMS, uh, it's very well compatible with one. Okay, so the other important channel is X to gamma gamma. Here, uh, again, one expects a peak in the diphoton invariant mass. There is uh, a background here, this shows the uh, diphoton invariant mass spectrum from, from Atlas. Here you see uh, the, the backgrounds mainly, this, this is jet plus photon, so the, this includes jets misidentified as photons, and this is the real gamma gamma production. Uh, and uh, you, you can see, basically, you need a good photon identification to reject, uh, jet, reject jets, and uh, uh, of course, uh, there is this background that is not uh, directly, uh, cannot be reduced because it's real uh, gamma gamma standard model production. So you have to try to find a peak on top of a smooth uh, background. So what is important is to have good uh, uh, photon energy resolution, but also angular resolution to get the, the angles uh, at which are produced the, two, the opening angles of the two photons. This is done with two slightly different approaches by uh, CMS and Atlas because Atlas has a method to select the hard scattering interaction among the many interactions uh, occurring in the, in, in the bunch crossing. And while Atlas also exploits uh, the longitudinal segmentation of the calorimeter to point toward the correct vertex. And uh, another important uh, point is what is used in this analysis, but also in the previous one, actually, but is particularly important in the X to gamma gamma is the categorization. So you don't do simply an invariant mass peaks, mass spectrum, but you try to classify events into based on expected signal over background using kinematics and photon ID variables. So then you can do plots like this in which you weight each event by it's a signal over signal plus background, and, and search for a peak. These are the two plots from CMS and Atlas. You can clearly see the, the, the peaks there. Both have a, a local significance above five sigmas, and if you look at the signal strengths, so the data uh, over a standard model rate, you see they are very compatible with, with Unity. Okay. The, the other uh, diboson channel is X to WW. This is 
very sensitive uh, at I, for 130 to 200 GV. And uh, as in comparison with the previous uh, channels, as the, the problem that you cannot have a complete uh, reconstruction of the final state because you have the neutrinos that are going away. You have quite large background from standard and dark model WW production, but also from TT Bar and Radian. And what, what one can do uh, to, to select the signal is exploit the uh, angle, characteristic angular correlation that we have in, in the production of X, because you have that X is, is scalar. And so the, the spin of the two Ws have to be back to back. And to, due to the V minus A uh, decay of the Ws, you, you will have that the two leptons go in, tend to go in the same direction. So, so the analysis requires opposite, two opposite side leptons, uh, missing ET, then categories based on 0, 1, and 2 jets, then topological cuts on the two leptons, mass, PT, phi, and, and what is very important is that you have to use a background, uh, dedicated background sample to estimate the backgrounds, use control samples, because you, you don't have a clear peak. So you, have, you need a good estimate of the background from data. And when you put all this together, you have a plot like this. This is the, the uh, transverse mass of, of, the, of the system. You have this distribution. This red is... Uh, the, the X signal when you sub, and this, this is basically the, the other WW processes. When you subtract uh, the background, you, you have this kind of, of signal. And uh, if you look at the plot uh, signal strength versus mass, you can see that these uh, measurements don't give a very strong uh, constraint on the mass. Uh, uh, so you, you give uh, this kind of shape. So you, you, what is done, you take the best mass from the other measurements and you for, the, for, the, for example, 125, and you look at the signal strength at this point. So, and th these are the signal strengths from CMS and ATLAS, again, very compatible with, with one, and both uh, the two experiments have significance between four and five sigma. Okay, so what, what, once you have measured all these three processes, you, what, what, what we, the two collaboration did is to try to get a precise measurement of the mass. So what is the... Uh, Important is that the, the response of the detector are, are to be calibrated. And this was done really to very good accuracy at the per mil level, uh, exploiting uh, known uh, dimion and dielectron resonance from uh, other standard model processes. This is, for example, the, as a function of PT, the, the mass scale for, for muons from ATLAS, where you see Z, Upsi, and Jepsi. This is the Z mass spectra from CMS. And compared to Monte Carlo, so you see the calibrations are, are very good. So what is left uh, is that the final error is basically statistically dominated. And uh, here you have the results from X to gamma gamma, uh, ATLAS, and CMS. Two four leptons, Atlas and CMS. So, and then the, they are all basically compatible. There is some two sigma level fluctuation, and when you combine everything, you get this mass that is uh, one hundred twenty five point zero nine with something like uh, 0.2 statistical and plus point eleven scale uncertainty. Okay, so there, there of course uh, on. On top of the mass, you can try to measure the width. What, what, what we say is that the, the, the expected width is 4 MeV, so is the, the experimental resolution uh, of these peaks is order 1 to GV. So what can be done is only to put uh, upper limits. So uh, at the moment, the upper limits are 5 GV for X to gamma gamma, uh, 2.6 from for X to 4 leptons, and when you combine, you go below 2 GV, basically. Okay, what you can do is to uh, um, use a trick, so exploit a off-shell production to measure the width. So when, basically, when you take uh, the bright victim of a resonance, you integrate what is in the peak and you look at what is in the tail. Basically, you have that the cross-section in the peak uh, contains uh, the width, the cross-section in the tail doesn't, essentially. So you can try to... 
uh, measure the ratio of production in the peak region and in the tail uh, and get some uh, some some uh, some limit on the width in this way and here you see that actually in the width you have different processes that contribute you, apart from the x production there is the zz production that has some interference and on top there is the qq bar production of two z's that also contributes and uh, so the analysis is based on uh, ZZ and 2W production, and, and the results are shown in here. So, so basically, okay, this is, explains what, what I was saying, and, and this is the, the limits that, that are obtained, basically the, the ratio of, uh, the limits on the ratio of uh, width of the X over a standard model width is uh, at the level of five, of five. And very similar, okay, similar results are obtained by both CMS and Atlas. And in both cases, these are a bit lower than uh, what, is, what would be expected. And of course, this depends a lot on the assumption of what, what is the cross-section for the other processes like QQ to diboses. So it's a bit uh, an indirect measurement, yes? Uh, okay, so what can be done uh, with, with this sample is also to study spin and CP properties. So studying the kinematics and the angular decays of, uh, of these uh, three processes, one can uh, measure JPC, uh, or at least uh, uh, test uh, uh, hypotheses that are alternative to the standard model zero plus plus, plus one. So the, the trick is, for example, you, you take the uh, x into 2z and four leptons. You, you have many angular distributions that you can do. Looking at each one by itself, you, you don't see very much uh, ability to distinguish, for example, from, uh, fr from the standard model and then the zero minus uh, hypothesis. When you take many of them and you put them together, into a multivariate discriminant, you, you start to see a some difference that can be uh, distinguished experimentally. Then you combine the three channels and, and, and you get uh, very good limits. So in, in, in practice, the result is that everything is consistent with the standard model hypothesis. Spin one is, of course, is excluded by the fact that you serve the decay in two photons that cannot happen for a spin one particle. And the zero minus two plus hypothesis are all excluded uh, at more than 95% confidence level. The, the, this is shown in this table. Basically, this is, are the different, uh, different hypotheses for, uh, in particular, for the tensor hypothesis, you, you, you have to choose different models with, with different couplings to, to, the, to the quarks, for example, because this change the distribution that you serve. Okay, on, on top of excluding uh, uh, different particles that are completely different JCP, uh, you, you can also uh, try to check if there are uh, contribution to the X coupling that are different from what you expect from the standard model. So you, you can try to write a generic Lagrangian, Lagrangian for a scalar particle then here you have the couplings uh, uh, that, that are correspond to the standard model X. But then you, you have other couplings from, uh, uh, that are still CP even, for, uh, but are not uh, the standard model one. And then you have uh, CP odd uh, couplings, for example. So you, you, you can, uh, what, what is done is to try to, to put limits to these uh, extra couplings. Th these are plots, for example, from Atlas, uh, that's, okay, for some particular cabling like this, uh, this K. Yeah. And this is a, a summary from uh, CMS that looks at the different uh, channels. And this A2 and A3 correspond basically to these uh, particular couplings here. And you see that in the end, when you combine all the ch channels, you have uh, this, uh, this green line is what is uh, allowed at one sigma. And, and and is very consistent with the standard model, basically. Okay. Okay, n now uh, we go to the search for decays of the Higgs bosons into fermions. 
and the most promising channel is the X to Tau Tau. So uh, th there is, of course, a, a large background, particularly from Z to Tau Tau, and also from di bosons. And uh, in this case, we have low cross-section and large background. So to, to, in this search, uh, there is a combination of all the different possible channels, from Tau Tau, tau going to leptons, but also hadronic Taus. And it's in, in very, very crucial for all this measurement, a good identification of hadronic Taus. This is, for example, a, a plot from uh, CMS that show the hadronic Taus from Zs where you, you see the mass of the, the visible mass of the tau and how well this is reproduced by the different, by standard model expectation. So the, the, the experiments are really good uh, identification for tau. Okay, okay. So the, um, so these different production models are combined with diff using signal over background as in, in categories as explained below. And uh, the other point is that to reconstruct the mass, uh, in the case of Taos, you have uh, escaping neutrinos. So you need some uh, method to exploit the kinematics and the missing energy to reconstruct the mass at, at best. This is an example of uh, uh, reconstructed Tau Tau mass uh, for a cut base selection in which you see, you see basically here the, the Z to Tau Tau, and on top of this, this excess. And when you subtract the excess from the background, you, you have this kind of thing. So some excess here that is broadly compatible with an X uh, expectation. These are different mass hypotheses for, for the X. So, so the, the results, when you do a full uh, multivariate analysis, uh, you combine the different channels. This is the case of, uh, of CMS where you see the results for different channels and the combination. You have these combined results that are compatible with the standard model and with pre precision that are, okay, still low. I mean, uh, the, these sigmas are the three to, in this case, four sigma level. Yes, so it's uh, an, uh, basically an observation at the three sigma level. So if you go then to X, X to BB bar, this is a, a channel where we have very large cross-section, but also huge backgrounds from uh, QCD. So what, what is done is that one has to use uh, special production channels like uh, associated production with a boson or a vector boson fusion to increase the signal of a background. And, uh, there have been many cross-checks uh, in which one tries also to, to look at the very similar process, uh, process of uh, VZ production w w with the Z decaying on, into BB bar that is something similar. And here we see, for example, the invariant mass of the BB bar from, uh, from Atlas where, where we see the, in gray the VZ production and in red w the, w what we expect from X. And this is, if this is the associated uh, production. This is the uh, vector, vector boson fusion case from CMS where you, you see this, this bump over a very large background. So again, what, what is done is a multivariate analysis. And you, you, have, you combine different decay modes, uh, different channels, and you end up with a combined result that uh, so it's basically a signal at the two sigma level for the associated production from uh, consistent with the standard model for CMS Atlas, and there is also a result from uh, VBF from CMS that is also there. Okay. Okay. So the, this is what what has, be, have be, has been uh, observed. Now the, all these things can be used to measure also cross section and uh, compared to QCD prediction. So this is a combined result from Atlas where the, cro the cross-section uh, has been measured and uh, combined between uh, four leptons and two photons. And this is compared to two theoretical calculations. In practice, this is the, the standard one used in most uh, uh, comparison to the, to the X. Uh, and, and this is a quite recent calculation done at the entry a low level, so uh, that shows that they, when you go to, 
to this uh, number of loops. Basically, you have a very small uh, uncertainty from uh, the QCD scale. That, OK, the uh, measure cross-section is okay, a bit higher, but still very compatible with the expectation. If, if we look at differential uh, cross-section, in this case, as a function of, of PT of the X, you see still a very good uh, uh, agreement between uh, data and different, uh, different uh, calculations. OK, now, the other imp important channel is the TTH production where uh, this is important basically because uh, the coupling of X to TT bar is important. This is already accessed uh, in the loops uh, of uh, GGH and H uh, gamma gamma, but of course in the loops you can have other contributions. So it's interesting to look uh, at it at the three level. And uh, here the cross section is really small, but the advantage is that the signal over background is quite good. So what is done is again, combining all kinds of, uh, of uh, decays. And uh, these are results from, uh, from Atlas for only for leptonic decays, where you, you see different channels from uh, two leptons and three leptons. And here you have also with two hadronic leptons, for example. And this is the combination from Atlas. This is something similar from uh, from CMS that includes also BB bar and gamma gamma results. So at the end, uh, the results from CMS is 2.8 plus minus one. So a bit, uh, uh, let's say, is two sigma higher than the one expected in the standard model. The results from Atlas are compatible in, within one sigma, both with the standard model and the CMS results. So th this is something maybe interesting to look uh, in, in round two. Okay. So one, once we, one has measured all these different channels, what can be do is to um, try to put together all these measurements and fit couplings uh, and so on. Uh, so what is done is that for each uh, of the measured channels, the data are classified based on the production method using selection uh, dedicated to enhance the signal uh, from a particular production. So these are basically the input uh, that goes into the combination. And uh, when you do the combination, you, you have basically the, these results. So if you, in this case of Atlas, you have the signal strength uh, for, for the different decay channels. So th th this is the combination in which the, you look at the decays. So you see all, all this is uh, compatible with, with the standard model. If you do a, an overall combined uh, mu, you get this that is very close to one from both, both experiments. OK, uh, what is a bit more interesting is to, to analyze this data in, in some phenomenal, let's say, in this framework of the, that is called K framework. So basically, uh, the, the standard model coupling is uh, parameterized with this uh, KF, uh, this K factor that is one uh, in the case of standard model and can be different. And one tries to put together all the measurement and measure these different uh, K values. And for example, if one looks uh, at the ratio, uh, one looks at uh, GGH uh, that, that goes to gamma gamma, uh, measures this uh, combination of factors. So each, each of the process, process measure, measures a different combination of these factors, and one can try to extract them. Uh, extract the couplings to the different standard model particles, basically. So what is uh, important is that if you assume that only standard model particles enter in the loop, then there are uh, relations that connect the photon and gluon uh, couplings to the, to the other KEI. Uh, this is the example of the X2 gamma gamma. In, in particular, in this case, you see that there is a negative interference be between the top loop and the W loop that allows to also to measure the sign of these uh, of these couplings, so these are re results on the on the on these k factors, the, these couplings, from uh, with the assumption of no beyond the standard model decays and no beyond the standard model particles in the loops. 
Okay, so you see the, the precision is, uh, everything is compatible with standard model. The level of, pre of precision ranges from 15% to 20, 30%. So quite interesting. Okay, and you, you can also put, take these uh, results and put them in this uh, nice, uh, at least, uh, propagandistic, let's say, plot where you put the, the coupling strength as a function of the particle mass, and you see very well that the coupling strength is uh, proportional to the particle mass as expected for, for the standard model X. Okay. Okay. Another, uh, of course, you, you can try to uh, fix uh, uh, these groups of these uh, K, K factors. For example, you can uh, assume that all the couplings to vectors are the same and have the same scaling, and all the couplings to fermions have, have the same scaling. And this goes to the KF, K, KV, KF, uh, uh, let's say, uh, plane where you can see here that, uh, so this is basically, yes, the difference between, between Yukawa and gauge couplings. And uh, assuming that there are no beyond the standard model contribution to the width and to the loops, so you, you, you can get these uh, exclusion limits where you have limits from all the different processes and this ellipse is the combined limit from, from ATLAS here and from CMS here, this is the the, the, the best uh, combination, this is the standard model point, here is the standard model point in the case of Atlas, both are within one sigma. And the, if you take, look just, uh, uh, you project this on one of the two axes, you have something like 6% precision on, on the vector and 14% precision on, on the KF. Okay, so the, all the, these measurements can be used uh, for, Okay, it can be using interpretation on beyond the standard model uh, um, models. For example, if you take the two X uh, two X uh, models, two X doublets models, where you have basically the the X plus uh, this uh, extra heavier X, the axial X, and the charged X. So you, you can see that basically there is a relation between uh, these parameters that, uh, that are tangent, tangent beta and, and alpha, that is the mixing angle between the two, two scalar x, and the parameters uh, that, that we just uh, constrained. So just from, the, from this measurement of the different kv, ku, and, and so on, you, you can uh, set limits uh, in the plane tangent beta and cos beta minus alpha on, for this model. And so you see that at low tangent beta, more or less, uh, there is a, almost everything is, is excluded uh, except the standard model. And at large tangent beta, okay, you have this region still allowed. And you can interpret this in the framework of the minimal supersymmetric standard model that is uh, a particular case of the 2x doublet model. And here, for example, you have the limit on tangent beta uh, versus the mass of the axial x, and you see that for large tangent beta, basically, you, you have a limit uh, of 400 uh, GV, basically, for, the, for MA. And this is a plot that basically has been shown in the previous talk before, before the cost fee break. So the, the, this uh, exclusion in, K, in uh, KF, KV can also be uh, interpreted in, in terms of the, of these composite X models. So the, these are these, part, in the case of these particular models, basically you, you can relate uh, Xi to the, these uh, couplings uh, that, that have been measured. And here you, you have, the, for different values of, of, of Xi uh, that you, you move in this uh, direction in the, in the plane, and basically, uh, okay, this is the region basically allowed that is around 0 0.01. This is true that in the case of Atlas, we have a fluctuation in the opposite direction. In the case of, uh, of, uh, of CMS, this is more compatible. So anyway, we, we will see in the next uh, round. Probably. Okay, uh, 
now, of course, one can use these measurements also to, to check if there are decays of the Higgs into invisible particles. Basically, one can try to, to sum up uh, all, all the observed decay and see if there is uh, anything somehow left. And uh, basically, technically, what is done is one takes the, the fit uh, that I said before and keeps free the, the couplings related to the loops, because in this case, we allow for uh, non-standard model particles in the loops. And also, the, the, we add a new parameter that is the branching ratio to invisible. And the, you can fit these uh, parameters and, uh, and, you, and get uh, limits on the invisible branching ratios that are about 30%. OK. So one can do even more, so look uh, directly at invisible decays. This is done, for example, looking at, uh, in the, at a Z or a W that recoils against uh, anything, so something missing. So this is a missing at T, for example, in the Z, plus, uh, in, in the analysis of an um, invisible X recoiling against that Z. For matters. This is the analysis in the vector boson uh, fusion uh, production mode, again looking at missing transverse energy from CMS. And these are the limits uh, that you can obtain for these direct searches that are, okay, a bit uh, less stringent than the one shown before in, for, the, for this case. For the BBF limits, they are again around 30 or, or 40 percent, okay, let's say 50. you can read the numbers yourself. In CMS, combine the direct and indirect limits and obtain, again, something like 30 percent. Okay, so th these limits on the invisible decays can be, as an, uh, many interpretations, of course, depending on your favorite model. One is uh, dark matter, so there are these uh, uh, X portal models that uh, somehow uh, predict the coupling of the of, of these dark particles to the X, and so you, you can use in these models you can uh, set limits on uh, on dark matter. <laughs> okay, so this uh, this is a dark ma dark matter mass. These are the limits under different assumption of vector. Fermion or scalar, and you see that these limits are very competitive to direct search limits uh, uh, for uh, dark matter uh, for dark matter produced. Uh, okay, from and uh, of course these are only valid uh, below the ma uh, one half of the X mass because you, you need the X to be able to decay into dark matter states. So just an overview of the next, uh, towards the next uh, LHC years. So LHC run two, this year we will collect probably about eight uh, invert, uh, inverse femtobars at 13 TV center of mass energy. So basically this will allow to confirm the run one results and will give also uh, some sensitivity to high mass uh, X beyond the standard model. And this is particularly true because here you can see the ratio of uh, parton luminosities uh, between 13 and 8 TV. You can see that uh, if you stay at the X mass, you, you have a factor two. So it, it generally X cross section are a factor two higher at 13 TV. Well, you start to go at one TV, you get factor tens in, in cross section. So for uh, uh, run two, we expect about to, to collect uh, in by 2018 100 inverse femtobarns. So we will have all these channels uh, like T tau tau BB uh, and observed uh, probably also TTH at at least three sigma. We can make uh, improve all these mass uh, and uh, coupling measurements at the end of run two. Uh, the expectation is to have couplings measured at the level of 10%. And of course, if there will be a luminosity LHC, uh, we will be also able to look at a very rare decays like X to mu mu, X to Z, Z photon, measure the X couplings at the few percent level, and also probably have an observation of the 
two weeks productions, and of course of all kinds of searches beyond the standard model. Okay, this is a projection of what can be the couplings, uh, the, the precision that we can obtain of the couplings at the end of uh, run uh, two and at the end of high luminosity LHC. I don't go in the detail because I basically say it. The only thing I, I would like to stress that uh, run two has started. We already started to collect data. Eight pico, inverse picomars so far. We have very nice signals. This is pet zero signal from, uh, uh, from CMS. This is the dimion mass spectrum from ASAS, where you see all the standard model resonances. And this also shows that for the Z, for example, we have already very good calibration, and very good uh, data to Monte Carlo agreement. So this is very promising. And OK, these are the conclusion that I don't know if I go through. Basically, it's a repetitive. OK. So we, there is a very clear X boson signal uh, at a mass of 125.09 GV. The spin one, two, and axial scalar hypotheses are basically excluded. We have a signal for fermion decays at the three uh, sigma levels for tau tau, two to three sigma levels for BB bar. And uh, we did uh, all kind of fits using sigma cross-section time branch duration for the different channels and everything is consistent with standard model, but also allow to constrain a wide class of already to constrain some model beyond the standard model. So the run two has just started and okay, we will get probably better mass and coupling measurements. Thanks. Yes. So you had, uh, just the slide before, you had uh, some data from CMS. So that's good news. That means that they are ah. seeing something. No, they're saying something. So the, you know probably that it was this problem with the magnetic field. Yes, that was so what I'm alluding. By zeros, you don't need the magnetic okay. field. Okay. You just measure photons. So. Yeah. Uh, probably you measure them better than with the magnetic field. Yeah. But there is, is there any news about uh, the problem? or? Okay, they say that probably they, ma okay, I, I don't know, this, this is not official, uh, okay, yeah. I think. So I, I think they say that probably they, they will ramp uh, soon and this will work. It's already working. It's already working. Yeah, no. ah, okay, you, you know better. Ah, ah okay, okay, so we have the good news, so good. good. <laughs> Perfect, <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> good. Any question in the meantime, or Mark? So everybody is happy. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you.